Hello and welcome to the Unit 15 presentation on Spirituality for Nursing Fundamentals. These are your learning objectives. Please review them in preparation for class and for the exam. So spirituality is central to nursing. It involves treating the whole person, including their spiritual dimension. It's a person's source of inspiration, meaning, and purpose. A person's health depends on a balance of physical, psychological, sociological, cultural, developmental, and spiritual variables. Spirituality helps achieve balance needed to maintain health and well-being and to cope with illness. Research has shown an association between spiritual well-being and increased immune system status. Spiritual well-being is comprised of an affirmation for life, peace, harmony, and a sense of interconnectedness with God or higher power, self-community, and environment that nurtures wholeness. Spirituality is broader and more unifying concept than religion. Religion is a particular system of faith and worship. Religion is an organized system of beliefs and practices. This includes rituals and rules of conduct. It's a way of spiritual expression. Remember that in some cultures, illness might be seen as punishment for wrongdoings, so these patients might think they deserve to be ill, so they require special attention. Um, spiritual beliefs are dynamic or changing over time. They may be brought to the forefront more during an acute or chronic illness or injury. Signs of spiritual distress include anger, being unsure of the meaning or purpose in life, questioning, why is this happening to me? Sometimes patients also have a spiritual conflict between a recommended treatment and their spiritual beliefs. An example would be a Jehovah's Witness. They realize that they might die without a blood transfusion, but their spiritual beliefs cause them to refuse the blood transfusion despite the risk of death. Some patients report near-death experiences, such as seeing a bright tunnel or being in heaven and then coming back. It can be helpful for the patient to allow them time to discuss this without feeling judged. Because expressions of spirituality and religious beliefs are so personal, it's easy for a nurse to unknowingly impose religious beliefs on a client. The nurse's ethical behavior depends on thorough self-knowledge as well as sensitivity to the client's statements and responses. While it's not okay to impose personal beliefs on a client, it is beneficial to pick up on client cues and then explore them with the client. So, how do we do this? Well, first we want to be aware of our own spiritual beliefs, values, and biases. Then we want to build a therapeutic relationship with our clients so that they feel comfortable talking with us about their spirituality or religious preferences. Be aware of the patient's religious beliefs. In Table 43.1 in your Craven text outlines this pretty clearly. Um, determine if there's any conflicts with medical treatment plans. Look for signs of spiritual distress, such as anger or expression of a lack of meaning in life, lack of connectedness with a higher power, or anything else out of the ordinary. So the Joint Commission mandates that each client admitted must be assessed for denomination, spiritual beliefs, and practices. So some questions to ask might include, what spiritual beliefs or practices are important to you now while you live with this illness? Or how would you like your healthcare team to support you spiritually? This slide also lists some more questions that you can ask to further assess your patient's spiritual health. You can go ahead and read through them to get a general idea. Here's a few nursing diagnoses for patients with spirituality disturbances. And then nursing interventions should be aimed at assisting the patient. Some examples for consideration are on this slide. They should be specific to the patient and what they need at the present time. Providing presence. And sometimes this is only the only interaction or intervention possible under the circumstances. Um, it's just being there for the patient. This can be huge for the patient or their family, depending on the situation. They might feel that you're the only one that cares at that point in time. Now, we can't always know what's the right thing to say or do, but being present speaks louder than words ever can. So what do you think? Can you as a nurse help patients with prayer? Well, if both you and the patient feel comfortable with prayer, it can be nurturing to both you and the patient, and it's definitely acceptable. Be supportive of prayer by providing privacy if desired. 
learning if the patient wants you to participate, or suggesting prayer to the patient or family if you know that prayer is a coping resource for them. You can also refer the patient for spiritual counseling if you're not comfortable praying with your patient or if you feel the patient would benefit from it. And then finally, we evaluate our plan of care. Were the goals met? Well, if not, revise the plan of care and start over. And this concludes our presentation on spirituality. Thanks for watching and have a great day.